Hey YouTube, I'm Jimmy. In this video, I'm going to walk through how the legendary investor Warren Buffett used the insurance companies that he owns to build his wealth to be more than $80 billion. Now, we all know that Warren Buffett is known as one of the greatest investors of all time, if not the greatest investor. So let's look at how he did it. And unfortunately, this video is not going to be an illustration of how we investors can duplicate what Buffett did but it will point out how he did it thanks to his ownership in insurance companies and maybe we can get some pointers as when we analyze insurance companies. So the key to Warren Buffett's amazing returns is really ultimately his ability to pick great long-term companies. But there is a math trick that really helps with his returns that most people can't duplicate. Well really it's an insurance thing that allows for Buffett to get returns that no one else has been able to match. So, if we go back to Warren Buffett's recent annual letter, well, on the first page, we can see that Berkshire Hathaway has a 19.1 compounded annual growth rate since 1965. And Buffett was kind enough to point out that the average return of the S&P 500 over that same time period was just short of 10%. But with this very impressive 19% annual gain, it's important for us to realize that this gain is the gain to the book value of Berkshire Hathaway. And this is the perfect number to use because if we wanted to value an insurance company, using price to book value is the ideal way of doing it. So the goal of any insurance company should be to grow their book value. And I bring this out because this is key to realize that what Warren Buffett has done is he has grown the book value of his company by more than 19% a year. So the question is, how does he do this? and the secret lies in the insurance companies that he owns. So in my latest video, I did, I reviewed my analysis of the Travelers companies. They're an insurance company. So I'm gonna use Travelers numbers to illustrate how Buffett pulled off a 19% growth rate of Berkshire Hathaway's book value, and then I'll tie it to the modern version of Berkshire Hathaway. Now, this is not intended to be an analysis of Travelers. I, in fact, the numbers that I'm gonna use are very, very loose numbers but they're based on Traveler's numbers. It's not even intended to be an analysis of Berkshire Hathaway. It's the concepts we're after. Okay, so the first thing that we should do is make sure we're all on the same page regarding what book value is. So here's the formula for the balance sheet. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Now, owner's equity and book value are generally the same thing. So we're gonna replace owner's equity with book value. Now, let's add some numbers. So Traveler's has uh, assets of about $100 billion, and then they have liabilities of about $80 billion. Now that means that book value must be about $20 billion since the two sides must balance. Okay, now just to recap the way an insurance company works. So an insurance company collects payments from their customers. They're called premiums. And then they collect them from a whole bunch of different customers from all over the place. And then when a claim comes in, well, the insurance company goes ahead and they pay that claim. Well, the insurance company keeps a giant pile of cash that they've brought in and they've yet to pay out, although in theory, they will need to pay it out in the future. Buffett calls this pile of money the float. This brings us back to the balance sheet formula. So this insurance company, Travelers Insurance, has about $50 billion in their float. This is money that they expect to one day have to pay out. This makes the $50 billion a liability. So of this 80, we know that 50 is being held for future payouts, but this 50 is actually cash. So, or more than likely it's probably investments, but either way, it's an asset. So let's stop right here and take a closer look. So right now, if we assume that this insurance company did not earn a profit or a loss based on their insurance business. So if they go out and they sell more insurance and they bring in more premiums and they pay some out, but they don't make either a profit or a loss, well, nothing would change as far as the value of the company. Instead of a float of 50, if they were able to increase their float to let's say 60 by selling additional insurance and paying out claims, assuming no profit, well, both liabilities and assets would go up by 10 to 60. But now let's switch back to 50 and let's assume that they invest that 50 and also let's assume that they get a 10% return on that money. Now that's a bit high of a target return for an insurance company, but let's pretend. So they get five on the 50 that they invested thanks to an impressive 10% return. Well, that five billion in returns gets added to the income statement and most of it goes to the bottom line. And if the insurance business itself had losses, well, 
these, this $5 billion would help, help offset those losses. If they had gains, well, this $5 billion would add to the gains, making them even more profitable. Now, assuming nothing else changes, no additional dividends are paid, uh, no buybacks are done or anything like that, well, the profits that go to the income statement that are not paid out, well, they end up in the equity section of the balance sheet, or as we're calling it, in the book value section. Now, technically, the way it would work is that the profits would end up in a line item called retained earnings on the balance sheet that's within the equity section. Either way, the result is the same. Book value moves higher. Liabilities doesn't move at all since it doesn't matter if we return 10% or 2%. Either way, we're going to owe the same 50. But this is the amazing part of the insurance business and ultimately the amazing part to Buffett's success and his use of the insurance business. So let's add that $5 billion to our book value. Well, now book value jumped from 20 to 25. Liability stays exactly the same at 80 and assets jumps to 105. Both sides of the balance sheet remain in balance, which is perfect. That's exactly what we need. But the amazing part is when we stop to do the math. What was the growth rate for book value? Well, we can see that the growth rate was 25%, which is a crazy impressive return from an investing standpoint. Now, we could have actually done this math quite simply without going through this entire process. All we have to do is look at the assets being invested and compare that to the size of the book value. In our example, we had $50 billion in assets being invested and the book value was 20 billion. Therefore, the assets being invested was 2.5 times the size of the book value. So a 10% increase is a 25% increase in book value. If the float had been 40, well, we would have had two times the size of book value. So a 10% return would have given us a 20% gain to book value. Now, in the case of Berkshire, they're actually so large at this point, and they own so many different companies that their book value is actually larger than their float. But this doesn't take away the advantage. It might take away the multiple of the advantage, but either way, if Buffett has $100 billion in float and the book value of the company is $200 billion, well, if he returns the same 10% on the investments of the float, well, that would add 5% growth to the book value. And this doesn't include any of the returns on all the other businesses that Buffett owns. Perhaps those businesses generate a solid growth rate of 8% on their own. Well, thanks to the insurance float returns, now that, that return for that year turns out to be 13%, assuming we add the 5% to the book value. And that's how you end up with such fantastic returns like Buffett has. Now, I think this is also useful for anybody analyzing insurance companies. That's actually how I came up with the idea for this video, because as I was doing my research for the Travelers video, well, I thought people might find it interesting to learn how much the float helps add to an insurance company's returns. Many insurance companies aren't that profitable in the insurance business alone because it is such a competitive business, but the investments allow for their returns to be amplified, like we saw, and that makes a business very profitable for them. But what do you think? Did you find this video interesting? What did you think of the topic in general? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And thank you for sticking with me all the way into the video. If you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.